I haven't been taking notes this season of Dice Funk because I'm not DMing, so it's not my responsibility to remember stuff anymore. But all I remember of, I think, what we're doing, because it's been a bit of a gap since we last recorded. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Austin. Did the Archbishop of Riddlefish show up? Is that basically what happened? <laughs> That's pretty much what happened, yeah. In fact, we're going to start in the Church of the Riddlefish, which I need you to describe, Laura. So you, we're putting you in front of the spotlight. The Thank you for approaching the snake. subject. Uh, the real snake, not the riddle fish, right? Well, Laura said it's the Church of the Riddle Fish in episode like one. But I might, the riddle s- it is the riddle snake. I'm just bad at knowing words. <laughs> I like the ambiguity because God is the he's the man, Jesus Christ, but he's also the Holy Ghost. You know, yeah. he comes in many oh. forms. I, I feel like I feel like if you have like a big like eel like serpent, if it's up above where it's dry, it's a it's a snake. If it's down under the water, it becomes a you know a, ser- a serpent, a fish. You know, it's a matter of perspective. I worry we're going back into crabs and lobsters territory, where I feel like I lost that fight, and I don't want to sh- get I'm pretty again. sure a, I'm, Austin. I'm pretty sure a snake is a fish. <laughs> I, this is my concern. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say, like, I'm pretty sure a snake is a crab, like, actually. What is, what is a snake if not a dry eel? <laughs> okay, so describe to me the inter- the interiority of the Church of the Riddlefish, which I imagine has like large marble statues of the, the snake in question. It has probably features of an eel, which is a fish, and a snake, which is a snake. Uh, but <laughs> it probably it, it probably defies description, right? It's like beyond an animal. It's something greater. Yeah. You're literally worshipping it. Yeah, look, it's a big long thing that has no arms. The line between snake and eel is, you know, it's nebulous. But uh... I mean, also, does it have any features of a deep sea worm? Because we're talking about hydrothermal vents this season. They're the whole thing. And uh, I, I'm really grateful to inform you. They're just chock a block with worms down there. Oh, I'm looking at deep sea worms now for ideas. Those are they're fun. They've got too many things on the side of them that you could maybe count as legs for for my for my <laughs> vision of this. I think I, I think the riddle fish riddle snake. I think it is essentially big big underwater tube. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. There are definitely marine worms that have leg situations. That's wild. Specifically, the red and white ones in the in the uh, in the vents, though the giant tube worm. They're called. Oh, I'm looking at these now. Yeah, I, I, I could see, I could see degrees of this. Um, I'm also thinking about like the uh, the viper fish, right? Like so that it's like a snake like fish that's long, and and it could be kind of confused as to whether it is a fish or a snake, right? Well, once again, you once again you've prefigured me because I have a viper fish prepared. Don't jump ahead. Oh gosh. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, back back away from the viper fish, which is a snake and a fish. I see. Um, yeah. I, so I think we established previously when we were talking that like the ch- the the church of the the riddle serpent is in like the 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 skull of some big creature. Did we establish this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, so it, yeah. Yeah, so I think sort of you you walk through like the 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 mouth of this big sort of uh, serpenty skull to you know your traditional rows of pews as you might have in a sort of uh, church setup, but I think there are a lot of vastly different interpretations of what the riddle fish, riddle snake, riddle serpent, riddle eel uh, looks like. I think I think that there is some deliberate ambiguity and there is. Artist interpretations from various parts of the ocean that are, you know, some might go, these were carved hundreds of years ago and are maybe more, you know, accurate to the scripture. These are more modern interpretations and maybe have been reinterpreted by, like, you know, people's perspectives on on the riddle, on the riddle lore. Uh, They all sort of are intertangled a little bit, like, they're all sort of just... Not not like separated as if they're all like these are the different interpretations. It's like ah, it's just kind of a bundle of different snake looking things over there. Um, Have you ever seen that diagram, which is the the Trinity, where it's like God is not uh, human but is Jesus? Mm-hmm. Do you know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try. To find I, look, I'm I'm gonna say a thing out loud that was in my head, and now I need to make it canon. All of the sculpt the different sculptures of the riddle fish are ultimately entangled, kind of like a rat king. Oh God. Mm. 
all of the statues are kind of like tangled up together, so it's just one big bundle of different snake interpretations. Yeah, this this diagram has a name. It's called the Shield of the Trinity. Mm. The, the Scutum Fidei. It's a it's a Christian symbol. That's exactly what I'm picturing, but with like a worm and a snake and an eel uh, all yeah. like p pointing at each other. Exactly. They're all kind of tangled at one end, and they all separate out, but they all kind of point back together at the other end. Big, big, big old tangle of, tangle of snake fish. <laughs> All right, so kind of an intimidating vista. Uh, the bishop, Bishop Bitter Creek, is here. Uh, he is a leafy sea dragon, Kuatoa. So a kind of fish person uh, with a, a bunch of appendages, which appear to be like leaves uh, they are draped all over his body, as along with long purple robes. So he is uh, extremely like regal and important looking, probably standing in contemplation under one of the uh, statues as you come in. Is that Sedragle? Yeah, Dragagli. Dragalga, yeah. Dragalga. Yeah, I have one. I don't know how to say it. It's a seahorse <laughs> with a bunch of a bunch of seaweed coming off it. Yeah, imagine if that Pokemon had legs and was wearing a like a purple priest's uh, frock. That's <laughs> what's going on here. Aww, well now I think they're adorable. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, Barbella is sort of uh, um, making sure to sort of usher usher them in and be like, "Oh, sorry, come in, come in. Uh, can I get you anything at all?" Um, and is hastily shoving away any like practice riddles under a desk to be like don't don't read these they're not ready they're not they're not ready for for the spotlight yet <laughs> yeah uh the bishop uh hears you all come in doesn't turn around uh it is still staring up at the uh statue uh do, do the other two of you say anything i don't know how often you all are here at this church uh i would have a question so my character has made a deal with somebody to mm -hmm. resurrect someone uh who's the person i made that deal with uh, absolutely the bishop that is uh yep i was i'm hoping you would ask <laughs> yeah uh for that reason then uh reaper is going to be kind of uh crossing her arms uh impatiently she's not saying anything but she is giving uh the bishop uh, a little bit of a stink eye and uh one thing i forgot to note last week that has changed with my character is uh, with this new level up, I have uh, what is considered key empowered strikes, but I'm changing it to shadow empowered strikes. So uh, I just want to be noted that my hands are radiating shadow energy at all times. I'm very cool. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the end of the last mission, I was going to give all three of you like reward items. Uh, so Barbella, you have the crab leg spear. Uh, Boyce, you have a package of the uh, red dust from the cape heart uh vent which is just the spell fireball you can just throw that and ignite that package as a bomb basically um and reaper you got nothing because <laughs> you left uh you made a character choice after you were injured to uh run away from the kids uh who are gonna give you their uh anemone boxing gloves but yeah. you uh said weak and left yeah, Reaper, Reaper's in uh, in her feelings right now. Uh, I don't I don't know exactly which emo song is currently playing in her mind right now. Uh, it might just be like a mashup of the saddest parts of all of them. It's like a supercut that is extremely <laughs> obnoxious to hear. <laughs> it's cacophonous. Just the yeah. entire <laughs> of discography of uh, My Chemical Romance at once. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I will say that Boyce is probably not going to at least initiate any conversation. I will say that the uh, manifested the um, probably thinking here the manifested mind of their spell book um, normally is showing like almost like an ever evolving series of diagrams and blueprints. But while in the uh, church, while they're observing all the riddles and stuff around it, those diagrams just kind of shift to like various in progress half done riddles just kind of floating around them uh in the air just written in like this sort of luminescent white chalk light sort of uh thing but uh they're just observing to start at the very least yeah if everybody files in and the guests don't uh speak up eventually the bishop uh asks first he says uh so what can make an octopus laugh Oh, 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 um, oh, I know this, I know this, I've been practicing, I know this, um, 
is uh, I know it has eight arms, but is it ten tickles? Good, good, Sister Barbella. You almost, haven't been almost neglecting. Almost caught me out there. Almost caught me out there. The the eight and the ten always always struggle on that. You have not been neglecting your studies. I'm so happy. Thank you. Was... May 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 I? May I? Uh, of course. Go uh, ahead. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, I, 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 I I've been I've I've been seeing this seeing this one in my dreams recently. Um, why did the ocean bring a ladder to the beach? Hmm. This is a deep question. I've prayed on this one. <laughs> I the it finally came to me recently, and I I, I think I think it works. Uh, to reach the highest tide. Oh, Sister Barbella! <laughs> like I'm so proud of you. You've done such great work. Thank I you. I was worried. Thank you. Please don't look at all of the drafts. I have so many drafts <laughs> that did not land. <laughs> I was worried that working for the school would d- dull your mind so it's I, great to uh, hear i i will i will not be i will not be deceitful it, it has not always been easy um and varbella sort of roots through some papers and goes um this one still needs some work uh what has eight legs and a grandpa head <laughs> an octopus grandpa yeah that Sorry, one Sorry, work in that one <laughs> That's more of an apocrypha. That's one of the commentaries. Yeah. It's not a main it's, book uh, one. You know, it's 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 there. I'll 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 get there. You know, not not every not every not every one of these comes to completion straight away. Sometimes you you sit with them a while. Thank you very much. Uh, do you two have anything to add? Is it time? Is it time for your reward? Reaper? No, you have not rendered your full contract to the church or the school. Ugh. How much longer do I have? Oh, it couldn't. It can't be long now. You were put up relatively high in the queue, and the vibe checkers on the island are moving along at quite a pace. I can't imagine it will be long now. Why does your work? chafe against you that badly it is below me but it's fine as long as i get what i'm here for and i want to remind you they don't do the vibe check on this one they just come back of course of course i remember the deal you will have your master back as soon as you've taken care of a few more errands okay otherwise i'm doing okay then i guess that is good. Little little, little gassy. <laughs> I would remind you that nothing is below you. We all float on the buoyant currents at the whim of the riddle snake. So let's all let's have a, our egos in check if we can. No. Uh. <laughs> Bar- Barbella is in the background, cogs turning, and is suddenly twigged. A contra- a contract with the church. I can force you to do riddles. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, no, that wasn't part of the deal. Like Reaper's gonna like like stand up on a pew and be like, I need to make it clear that was not part of the you deal. You want to stay on the good terms with the church, don't you? <laughs> Careful, paladin. I'm not to be made a clown of. <laughs> no, <I get that. laughs> but is there a step so I could use to get down from this pew it was taller than I thought Boyce <laughs> uh, 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 will have um, uh, Gotti like slither on over and like change size to be a suitable stepping stool for Reaper uh, excellent the world should always beckon to my call delightful well Reaper we know why you're here and Barbella you are favorite Faithful servant as always, but today I have a a job that may actually interest you, Boyce, more than anyone else. Well, you don't say there. So, uh, I, I, I mean, is it a construction project? Is it a is it an inspection? Is it a is it a raw material acquisition that I need to double check and make sure that the uh, the quality of the assets is up to uh, up to snuff? You lost me in some of the esoterica there, but no, I have a 
a person who may be helpful to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got my interest already, but uh, might as well listen to what you have to say then. There's a civil engineer known across the lands who goes by the name of Elfago. They uh, met with a terrible accident on a job site, but after waiting their turn in the queue and passing the vibe check, I think they are ready to join the community and be quite helpful building up uh, our little town. Civil engineer, you say? Hmm. I wonder if Boyce would know anything about this. Is there a history check I should do about this or see if I've heard? Absolutely. All right. Let's see if uh, that is a 15. Yep. That's E-L-F-E-G-O, Elfago. And they are a Thrycreen, which is a D&D word for an insect person. Or in our, ter- in our terms, not quite an insect, uh, an isopod, mm-hmm. which is a sea creature that looks a lot like an insect. I believe it's probably an, an ancestor of some insects because it's one of the oldest, most ancient creatures. Uh, this is an anthropomorphic version. Uh, you may be familiar with the Pokemon Glossopod. I'm putting a picture of it. Yeah. Glossopod is an isopod, and uh, this it's a kind of armored insect person, uh, anthropomorphic for our purposes, uh, four arms, two legs. Uh, yeah, and this is a kind of engineer person who was uh, you know, killed in the line of duty, but thanks to the Well of Resurrection, can be brought back and join the community. Uh, and Bishop Bitter Creek hands over a plate, like an armored p- uh, piece of uh, the person, <laughs> which remains. Uh, not, they don't have bones, so that's what you get. Ah, so uh, we're to deliver this into the well and guide them back to the community, I take it? Yes, uh, I know normally you run errands for the school, but uh, the team I usually have bring things to the well is busy. They're escorting some VIPs from the mainland out here. So uh, I thought, Barbella, you could get some reps in, as it were. Uh, only... A priest or paladin of the Riddle Snake can sense them and be guided to the well. So, uh, it, it, you you are required. <gasps> oh, I won't let you down. I've, I've got this body and mind ready. I'm gonna do it. Ugh. And make sure to put your heads together. You will be tested, and failing one of the grand riddles, well, let's just say. There are very rarely survivors of these encounters. So what you're saying is these two are gonna have to put up with riddles for a bit. <laughs> Reaper raises her hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, Barbella uh, is actively giddy. <laughs> Can I just fight the riddle fish? Uh, I think we're all fighting against the riddle fish's questions in our own way, if that's what you mean. If you mean physically, no, you'll be obliterated and vaporized. Uh, <laughs> well, aren't the answers in the book? Don't I don't have to, like, think of them, right? There are answers everywhere if you have the eyes to look. Uh. You know, the book, the book contains some of the riddles that have been, you know, promised to be most uh, sort of spiritually enlightening, but there is a whole world of riddles out there, and if every riddle was in the book, then there would be, well, there would be no riddling. It, you know, it's not a riddle if, if, if the answers are just there for us. Well said, Barbella. You've really honored us today. Thank you. Also, I'm doing so many reps, I'm getting really good at lifting things. <laughs> <laughs> Your every motion causes a flex, which pushes the furniture around in here. <laughs> so, if we're going to go and do this, then, what normally does this team run into? Are we, should we expect an encounter with the business bear and banana boys? Oh, I, I haven't heard of any of these Bear and business banana boys so far, but uh, there are the normal oceanic dangers, sharks and things of this nature. There are surface dwellers who do not mind their business and uh, wish to know the secrets of the church. Uh, there are the riddles three, of which no ordinary mortal could pass. Uh, this, this is why it's our sacred duty. 
Mm, mm. Oh, speaking of the surface dwellers, I did I did have one more riddle for you. I did want to share that uh, I I think might be apt in in this moment. Why did why did the deep sea diver go to therapy? Mm. To get mm. <laughs> too many issues with pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it just it cuts the Reaper's extremely unhappy face and then like smash cut the outside to you all leaving. <laughs> yeah. Her expression does not change in between them. She's just walking now. She's very annoyed by this. <laughs> but yeah, this seems like a pretty simple mission. Just throw the isopod part into the hole where the fish is and then come back. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, in out five minutes, we'll be done. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a short arc. <laughs> right. I, I, I say that. Barbella's going to drag this arc out as long as possible. This is a rare <laughs> opportunity. She's not going to rush through it. Oh, I think we should just like walk in a figure of eight for a bit. That's probably part of the riddle. We'll, we'll do that while I ask other riddles, too. There's going to be other wordplay shenanigans going on. Like, Barbella say, like, oh, look, there's a fork in the road. And then cut to the obvious, you know, like, trident in the road. Uh, and so, oh, tr trust me. I have so many riddles ready for so many occasions. Fantastic. Austin will say the wrong word, and I'll be like, oh, speaking of that. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so right now, Barbella, you are point on this mission. You are the only one who can sense the riddle fish. This is like uh, the Great Eastern Sea where we're playing. You know, I don't have the exact area of it, but let's just say for argument's sake, you know, something like the Atlantic Ocean. It could be anywhere. Uh, and only people who are clerics or paladins of this, you know, deity or whatever it is, we don't even know, uh, can, can sense it and find it uh, easily. So can I get a religion check? I'm wondering if I should just throw a guidance just to be safe on this. Uh, 20. Bam. All right. That's great. So you yeah, immediately feel it. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. So uh, paint me a picture of what this looks and feels like because the, the riddle fish, the riddle snake, the riddle eel is out there somewhere. Um, and we know whichever uh, hydrothermal vent it uh, is at becomes the well of resurrection. I believe we've discussed it mm. off mic as being like stars in Mario Party. Mm. <laughs> when you're like, <laughs> you'll get there, it'll do its thing, and then it'll move, and the, the you know the riddle snake will move on. Yeah. So I think specifically the the back and forth that's been uh, going on with uh, Barbella and the Archbishop throwing the riddles back and forth. I think this is sort of. It's almost like being in meditation. It has sort of uh, gotten the the the, uh, the attunement of riddles going. And I think that, you know, Barbella just takes a second to compose and goes, I don't know what's in that direction. Therefore, that's where we're going. The place of least certainty is where we must go. Do all of your... Church things have stupid rules. I mean, you know, our our religion sort of works off vibe and practicality and and form. You just you just go with where the answers are, and the answers are where we don't know, which is I think that way. No. I invented the church. I would just make the resurrection well in the place where it's the only the strongest can survive. Then only the strong could bring people back. Well, yeah, but then anyone who is strong could bring people back and not, you know, people who've dedicated their life to understanding the mysteries of the unknown. Such as where the riddle snake hangs out, a thing we don't know. But we do know because it's over there the place we know the least about. This makes sense, actually. See, right? If I say words long enough, they start to sound like they mean something. That's the beauty of this religion. <laughs> it's much like how the, the tentacles joke is about a creature that has eight tentacles. It doesn't, it's not perfect, but the, the energy is there. And Barbella will just start striding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as you stride off in that direction, uh, you know, you see clear blue ocean in front of you. Uh, nothing that notable. Uh, can I get a perception to see if anything sticks out? Is this for everybody then? Yeah, anyone who wants it. Uh, 14? Five for boys. 
Uh, 18. All right, the group passes, 14 and 18. 18 specifically, Reaper, I will give you. You see a little fleck of blue in your periphery as you approach a uh, kind of field of seaweed and algae here. Uh, seaweed is algae. I don't know why I said it like that, uh, but it's Grandpa Capehart who's like scuttling around. And I think with the 18, you see him as he kind of scuttles into uh, a patch of seaweed as if to hide himself from you. Uh, I am uh, going to reach into my pocket and I am going to pull out one of uh, my darts uh, which, uh, in this universe, uh, I've reflavored to be, like, a, a shuriken. Um, but imagine a shuriken, uh, as if it was designed by, like, a uh, Razor Mice, uh, company. Like, it's, it's <laughs> just, like, it's very edgy with, like, almost tribal-esque patterns to it that you're like, this is weird. I don't understand any aesthetic of this. <laughs> Uh, and she is just going to uh, throw one uh, towards Papa Capehart. Uh, Grandpa Capehart, what uh, are or you Grandpa trying to hit? Capehart, sorry. Is this um, intimidation or a hit? This is more intimidation. All right, roll intimidation. To make it clear that I know he's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, six. Oh, I hope I just hit him. <laughs> You throw the shuriken into the seaweed. Uh, it rustles. Uh, I think uh, uh, Barbella and boys can look over at you because you didn't say anything. And then the shuriken comes flying back out. Uh, eight? That's going to miss you, huh? Yeah, that's going to miss. I'm going to dodge it. <laughs> Jump at Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Sorry about that. I wasn't expecting it. I panicked. <laughs> uh, Reaper is going to have like a handful of shuriken uh, held up. And she's like, so you don't want to get into a shuriken fight? Oh, hell no. Oh, uh, not since the late 80s. I, mean, I, was, I was quite a shuriken man back in the day, but those those uh, years are behind me. Mm. Fang, but why are you following? I am following. I'm coming back. Back from what? I, I was uh, following some people that were skulking around. They looked like they were up to no good. So I was just kind of... I was kind of trying to do a good deed, maybe see if people was not being mad at me for trying to kill uh, Papa Capehart and take his vent. I thought, you know, you'd let Grandma live, so I thought maybe there's an opportunity for uh, us let bygones be bygones and not have to be a whole thing. Uh, I want to roll an insight on Papa Capehart. Absolutely. Uh, seven. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just you have no idea what this little crab's up to. I mean, he's a big crab. To be clear, he's a blue fiddler crab with a claw the size of his body. <laughs> well, I'll say it like this. Uh, Reaper does not trust him. She is just unjustified in not trusting him at this point. <laughs> sure. Yeah. He says, uh, y'all, you could have thrown me in jail or, th- or, you know, killed us both, but uh, you just kind of uh, shattered your body against Grandma's a, a, a carapace and then left. So... Uh, a lot of unanswered questions. I don't know where we at in the community, and I don't really want to go scuttling on out of here because you know the vents are valuable. But uh, maybe if I catch a ne'er do well, that could turn things around. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about these uh, indiv- these suspicious individuals you saw? Not to say that we're going to rustle them up or anything, but maybe just to look down in case trouble starts brewing up that way. Oh, yeah, there was about a dozen of them. Uh, they were armed. They had all kinds of weapons, which is what I thought was mighty suspicious. And they were kind of uh, skulking around uh, underneath the gig. I don't know what they were trying to do, but they were like looking through the windows and they were kind of, you know, checking out people who were coming and going. I don't know if they were pickpockets or what. And then I scuttled over there and I said, hey, hey, what you doing? What you doing over there? And then they swam away and they went they went in this direction. Hmm. Uh, Barbella starts flicking through the riddle book uh, and opens on a page and goes why did the honey loving thief uh, uh, or what happened to the honey sorry what happened to the honey loving thief he couldn't keep his sticky fingers to himself (laughs) (laughs) that's a bad sign this is not this is not looking mm. Yeah, I do not like the sound of this. I want to give Laura something <laughs> for all these riddles. Uh, is there is there some kind of role you want to make here? Uh, I think we've done insight on uh, Papa K- <laughs> or on Grandpa Capehart, but it, there could be something else. Um, I'm having a look at what the 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 options. Maybe survival. Uh, 
Yeah, to maybe get a sense of, of if there's any any signs we can follow. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. try survival. Eight. Not great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think the thing I will say with an eight is that the seaweed uh, seems pretty unrustled, and uh, obviously there's clear blue water above it. So if they left any, uh, if they came this way, they could have just went above the seaweed and not left any tracks. Yeah. This is something we have to keep in mind in an oceanic campaign: is not everyone's leaving footprints all the time. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay. But yeah, no, Bar Barbella is is trusting that, like, this is not just a ruse to pretend there were suspicious characters. There are suspicious characters. There's sticky-fingered types going around. You know, th th maybe they're after the Riddlefish. We're going the Riddlefish direction. They're going this direction. It's, ba it's a bad sign. Yep. So Grandpa K-Part says, uh, Well, I, I would appreciate if you tell people I helped you find the, the bad people, the, the rustlers or the bandits or whatever they are. You know, just say I lent a claw. That would do me real good. You know, that would go down smooth. And I'll see you back in town. We better not. I don't want any of you K-Parts near me. I want to make that very clear. But your family, Reaper. You're invited to the cookout. We're having one this weekend. Aren't you bringing the ribs? I am not family. And then she's going to like turn uh, to a direction no one else is in and just say under her breath, family is only good for hurting you. <laughs> uh, Barbella will turn around and go, don't, don't take it personally. Um, they're also tied to the church and don't want it. They, they, anytime there's any kind of connection, they're like, oh, I'm not, no, oh, push away connections. You know, rather than just embrace that they could be told riddles and that that's, you know, you know, they just don't want to connect. All right, you bring it, you bring in the, the rolls, Barbella, to the BBQ? Oh, oh, 100%. I baked such large ones. They're so big. It's like two rolls, but they're very big rolls. That's so I mean, underwater. That's so impressive. How are you baking underwater rolls? You all are I'm so awesome. <laughs> the secret is that you have to be okay with the rolls getting a bit wet. <laughs> they're a little okay. soggy, you know. <laughs> they just, just yeah, little, but they're little you know, water rolls. That's good. You you bake them real good, and they like they get a real solid crust, and that like that buys you some time. That's why I make them so big. It takes longer for the water to get to the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna scuttle sideways now. It's how I walk. It's not weird. I'm, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> just just the idea. Of He's him. got us there. I just think the idea of a character just declaring they're about to do something. Just say it's not weird and just doing it. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe Barbella should maybe Barbella should start doing that. Be like, I'm gonna tell you a riddle. It's not weird. It's not weird. It's not weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, uh, so with this uh, eight roll in survival, you can kind of just work your way through the uh, field of uh, seaweed here. Uh, seaweed is, of course, a kind of algae, with not a plant. It's a eukaryotic organism. Uh, the ocean is so fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> why did we why did we make this campaign like this? The ocean's annoying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I had to learn so many facts. Um, I will say up ahead, you see uh, a very interesting site, which is the bottom of the plant island above you, you know, where, where the dry team does their part of the campaign. Uh, there are just long roots and vines hanging down into the ocean. Um, and this, this part, for some reason, uh, the, you were just going through uh, what seems to be just... Uh, Almost like a mini forest of these roots and vines. Uh, I was going to say, can I do a, a nature check on these roots and vines? Like, how does it, uh, does it have any, like, uh, function down here or anything like that? Like, if we touch any of these roots, are we going to fuck anything up on the, the top side? Absolutely. Nature check's great. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask for something kind of similar, so I'll, I'll join in on nature checking things here. I got a 14. I got a I, ro I rolled a 10. I, I got a 1. But not a botch. I don't know shit. Not a botch, though. Yeah, I got an unnatural 1. All right. Uh, so uh, you're kind of just going ahead, Barbella, head empty. A 10 and a 14, the group does get average information here, which is Reaper. You know that the uh, the plant island, the whole thing's made out of plants. There's no soil, which is uh, an interesting wrinkle in normal plant uh, you know life 
cycles. There are things called air plants, which don't require soil, but basically the ocean, especially formulated to uh, be full of nutrients that the plants crave. And they send down these roots and vines to uh, absorb uh, those nutrients up into the bio uh, sphere up there. So this, it's basically the island is drinking the ocean, which is normal. I'll say that. So th everything seems normal with your average, um, but you, we, I needed a 15 uh, to get uh, the next level of information here. To get, the, to get some juicy knowledge. Yeah, but th the circle of life is island drinks the ocean, island makes like plant animals, plantimals, if you will, which uh, live and die, and then they decompose back into the, the ecosystem. So that's the circle of life. We just, we just, we just swimming around in corpse water here, I see. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, it's it's beautiful, really, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. it's you know, it's it's like the Ouroboros, the the snake eating its tail, the cycle that continues. You know, it it all goes around and around, much like much like we can learn from the 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 great snake slash fish. <laughs> Reaper is going to be deeply inhaling the water uh, because she believes she gets stronger from drinking corpse water. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything anybody wants to do before I talk about the next area or the next roll? Uh, I mean, Boyce is probably just doing like almost like a survey inventory of things. Um, I would suspect that points people propose ideas of using the root structure as a lattice structure to build housing around. Um, so I have this feeling that the root structure just changes over time as it grows, which limits its ability to be a durable, long-standing foundation for housing, effectively. Yeah, I will say that there are some uh, vines and roots here, which seem specifically like water resistant or like they thrive in the water of the Eastern Sea so that they they won't like fall apart or, you know, rot if you make something out of them. So I will say that definitely seems like a possibility here is to take plants from the island to build below it. The problem, of course, is you want to do it sustainably. You don't want to cannibalize the islands people are living mm -hmm. on. Uh, so, yeah, right. I think if you want to make a note of that. Yeah, yeah, just sort of like, yeah. just like, okay, like, what, do any of these vents have any materials of note? Okay, if they do, a lot of people are just apprehensive of noting about that, and here's just like, okay, either using, yeah. either using the roots directly or even building around them like a scaffolding, neither is really tenable long term, uh, especially because I believe if you built a house with this as like the skeleton of the house, it would inhibit its ability to absorb the nutrients it needs to feed the plants above. No. I, I have the Ouroboros metaphor on the brain tonight. You know, the, the snake can eat its tail, but only eat a little bit of the tail. If you eat too much of the tail, you cease to be an Ouroboros and you are just, you, you, you just, eat, you just auto cannibalism at that point. That's not sustainable. The Ouroboros can have a little bit of its tail as a treat. Yeah, you can only eat as much of your tail as you can grow back. You gotta be real slow eating your own tail, Ouroboros. <laughs> the Ouroboros can suck its own tail. It's not weird. Yeah. <laughs> not weird. Um, who's carrying the uh, the uh, what chitin? The the chest piece of the Thrycreen we're trying to bring back. Um, probably. I think either either Boyce or Barbella probably. If 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 no one else volunteers, Barbella will take the opportunity to carry more things. That's that's just free weight training. Uh, because Reaper's curious is gonna be like, can I hold it? I sure. I don't see why not. Warning, it's a little heavy. I'm also very strong. Are you insinuating I'm not strong? Just, I'm just saying that I don't see you do a lot of weight training, so just, you know, make sure you brace your your, your, your knees, you don't take the weight on your back. Uh, and Barbella hands it over. To be truly excellent at martial arts, you must make sure that your form is fit enough to perform your actions at the most uh, pristine and fast level. There was an episode of Dragon Ball Z where Goku trained too hard and got too strong and his fighting power actually went down. <laughs> Okay, you you have you have a you have a chunk of body now. Excellent. Does it smell? I'm gonna say it before I smell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great um, question. I didn't try smelling it because last time I did that, I did walk in circles for a while. It's probably best I don't. I'm o I've almost certainly smelled a related animal. Are you all aware of the roly poly? 
Yeah, I love those guys. Is that what you call uh, woodlouse, uh, Roly Poly? They're a little little circle. Yeah, guys. Wo- yeah, woodlouse. Yeah. Okay. Is that the British term? Because I learned yeah. during research for the season, they are not insects. They're not bugs. What I call a Roly Poly is a kind of isopod, one of these creatures that's just a it's a terrestrial or land version of this underwater creature, yeah. and not a bug, which is amazing. What are you doing, nature? <laughs> yeah, that's a crustacean, huh? That's a fucking crustacean. What the f- Come on. Yeah. Uh, no, I get I get confused because America, you have too many terms for this. Apparently you call it a roly poly or a pill bug, I've heard it sometimes uh-huh. called. Yeah. Or a potato bug. Yeah, other common names include slaters, potato bugs, butchy boys, and doodle Ooh, bugs. Butchy I'm sorry. boys. Butchy, the butchy <laughs> boys is definitely a fucking like LGBT gang. <laughs> they go around beating people. With baseball well, apparently bats. in some parts of the UK, and I've never heard this, we call it a cheesy bug. <laughs> this guy has so many cute names. We love these. Oh fuck! I, I as much as I love talking about roly polies, and I do. Uh, can I get uh, dexterity saving throws from everybody? Ooh. Oh. Oh. Interesting. All right. Dexterity. Five. 17. 17 as well. Is a five good enough, Austin? <laughs> uh, so Barbella fails. So I think what happens here is Reaper says, can I hold uh, the piece of the Thrycreen and Barbella hands it over and you just aren't paying attention when there is a uh, a wave that comes by and you are kind of pushed into the roots and vines that are underwater, which normally wouldn't be a big deal, but then you feel a terrible burning pain across your back, Barbella. Uh, you, want, you take Ooh. seven damage. Ouch. And you all see blood in the water as Barbella uh, seemingly just brushes against a root, which shouldn't normally do that. Uh, Can I do a perception check to see if there are enemies nearby or if something like specific caused this? Uh, I think medicine check. Medicine. You you should definitely do that to get to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I got a six. 19 for boys. All right, boys, you see the slash across uh, uh, Barbella's back, and you uh, pretty quickly deduce what happened there, because uh, normally things uh, that sharp make themselves known, uh, you know, big sea predators uh, uh, that you all would be able to see with the naked eye. And so you deduce what happened is that a bunch of these roots are covered in barnacles, uh, very sharp barnacles. Uh, and you, you kind of realize you were actually kind of in a minefield. These things, especially if you are caught in a like a crush of a wave, can kind of grate you like cheese if you were just slammed and dragged against something that is covered in barnacles. I see. So the the operative issue here is that we got to tread carefully through here, lest we get nudged by current and just get you know cheese grated by these barnacles effectively. Uh, may I suggest something I could try to do? Please. Uh, so one of my new abilities is to, uh, step within the shadows, and as a bonus action, I can teleport, uh, 60 feet to an unoccupied space that's in, like, dim light or darkness. Uh, can I use that to, like, shadow dash my way, uh, through this minefield to avoid getting slashed? Yeah. Okay. Um, Barbella's gonna use Misty Step. To teleport uh, up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that I can see. All right. So two of you essentially have teleportation. That's pretty cool. Uh, Boyce, what about you? Uh, Boyce also has a teleportation ability. (laughs) Um, uh, So what what Boyce will do is uh, brace themselves against one of the roots that doesn't seem to have many barnacles on it. And then sort of send um, Gaudi to swim and swim through the root because Gaudi can just become incorporeal with respect to the root structure. And then as it escapes near where uh, Barbella and uh, Reaper are, Boyce has the ability as part of the Strixhaven mascot to, if your mascot familiar is within 60 feet of you, you can teleport as an action swapping places with the familiar. All right, so... Uh, Reaper, you just look for a shadow cast by a distant root, and you step into a shadow near you and come out that far away. That's what yours looks like. 
Yeah, I look very cool as I do it. I do like a little ninja pose, step through, come out the other side, and then I like kind of look for people to be impressed and applaud me. I know it's not going to happen, but like there's a brief moment where she's thinking to herself, like, I'm so fucking cool right now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Barbella, your misty step, do you just like turn into mist or like sea foam and just kind of drift away? What does yours look like? I. I think it is a sort of like sea foam effect that's happening, but I think it has a somewhat serpenty shape to it as as it sort of snakes its way. I would say that to flavor Boyce's teleportation is that once Gaudi gets into range of the others, it sort of like shifts into a schematic of itself before that schematic transforms into an outline of Boyce. So then Boyce swaps places, leaving an outline of himself that reforms back into Gaudi, after which Gaudi just resumes swimming back to catch up to everyone else. So the group uh, rejoins each other. Uh, is there anything you want to say to each other before uh, I actually want another religion check from Barbella to see if you've lost your bearings? But yeah, do we, all of you uh, compliment each other's teleportation or are you all just like, oh yeah, I can teleport too. It's no big deal. <laughs> I mean, we, we all handled that very effectively. I really hope there's not, like, three or four more minefields, you know, back to back, because, like, you know, th then we're, I'm going to have to actually deal with getting through it and not just jump past the problem. <laughs> can't, can't you... Can't you do yours at will? I can. I mean, I can do it at will, but it's a spe... It, 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 it like, uses up a resource to do. Oh. Well, how sad and pathetic that must be. <laughs> I can... <laughs> All I need is a shadow and I can go anywhere I want. Well, That's what happens when you worship the shadows. Fine. Well, uh, you know, to, uh, you better start thinking up some riddles before I tell the riddle church that you're uh, being, being not good about riddles. And, uh. I, um, <laughs> what do you call... A shadow that is in your face. Is it you? Face shadow. I don't... This is dumb. See, it's, this harder, is than dumb. It, it's harder than it seems okay. We'll get there. Um, what's, what's a shadow that's in 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 your face? Um, uh, 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 oh, looking, eye shadow! Looking, looking at you a bit shady. There you go. A bit go. of a shady look. Ooh. All right. Yeah, there we go. See, it's not, bad. it's not that hard, right? Is the church happy with me now? Can I stop? I, I'll let you stop for now, but I, you know, next time there is a riddle, I might I might make you take the first crack at it. <laughs> <sighs> this reminds me of an artist who's done a lot of great art for the show. Slime King Mike has repeatedly asked for us to do Vatican season. And I want to say, Mike, <laughs> this is the closest we're ever going to get. <laughs> These fucking fish yeah. church people. <laughs> uh, also, I did a religion check and I botched. Oh no! <laughs> Barbella is too interested in trying to get uh, try trying to get certain party members doing riddles and not enough on following the riddle trail. Oh no! Okay, riddles so. are tricky like that sometimes. Sometimes a particular riddle will stump you. No, that's good though. I like this. So, Barbella, you've teleported in one direction. You think you're still going the right way, but you've actually gotten kind of turned around and you start uh, leading the party in just the wrong ass direction with a botch. So, you don't know this yet, but we'll get here in a second. Uh, what are you all doing or saying as uh, you follow Barbella uh, just completely the wrong way? <laughs> um, trying to think here. I mean, outside of just like, you know, Given a Gotti a little pet and just like, you know, a little bit of a, a supportive word. Boys will know, like, I have to be honest, uh, Reaper, I haven't seen you pull something like that before. It's a pretty nice little trick you got up your sleeve. What, teleporting into shadows? Yeah, yeah. Yes, well, when you channel the shadows and claim it as your own power, you become one with it. You could say I was born in darkness, molded by it. Hmm. I can see what you mean there. Uh, it's uh, trying to think of a little bit of wordplay for it, but it's not nothing's coming to me at the moment here. Uh, I'm just, I'm still just curious about this whole matter. Just while wow, we're we're doing this particular errand, and uh, 
So it was a little. I actually have a question for you. Ah, oh, go for it. I know why I'm doing this, and I know why she's doing this. Point to Barbella. I don't Hi. understand why you're choosing to follow this silly church. Ah, well, I'm, I'm more of like, and I, I, I live down the street, and I'm not on bad terms with the church, but it's just like it's just like the school. It's a central point of the community, and in order to foster the best uh, place for people to live, I have to understand why people live here in the first place. So uh, sometimes you just have to be among those you're working with in order to come up with the best answers for them. Wouldn't you build the strongest community if you cut out the weakest members? I mean, in theory, yes. But at the same time, if you operate under that principle, then it ends up being a self-defeating methodology because the metric for what is considered strongest, that, that line shifts over time. And eventually, uh, you end up losing people more than you retain. But that's how tournaments normally work. Right, but life isn't a tournament necessarily. It's not. Not necessarily. In some respects, maybe. But, like, if we're talking about just, like, someone lives down the street and maybe they need a little uh, a little extra protection from the waves, then, yeah, it's not that much to provide that. And maybe there's other things they can provide beyond strength to the community. It makes the community stronger, greater than the sum of its parts, you know? If you think about it, the individual molecules that make you up are not strong on their own, but the collection of them as a system makes you strong, Reaper. I need to uh, rebuke that. All of my molecules are strong, and I am insulted you would dare insinuate otherwise. I mean, it... it I'm just I'm just someone that's just my my thought is that I'm all about systems and how systems grow and relate to another, whether that's a single home, whether that's an individual or the entire community that we have around the gig here. And you get what out of this? I mean, it's what I like to do. It's what I've, I studied to do for that matter. And also, it's just kind of me doing what I can for someone special. So you do all of this and build a community and you don't get any strength or power from your own out of it? I mean, unless you consider knowledge to be power, I don't know. I do not. Then I guess by your metrics, no, I, I don't get like uh, powerful or strong as a result of my work necessarily. Confusing then. Very well. Well, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what do you plan on doing once you uh, bring your uh, master back? Why? I'm going to kill him. So all this work is just to bring him back and kill him just to prove that you're stronger than him? Yes. What else would I be doing it for? Are you, are you going to do this, like, over and over? Is this, like, bring them back, kill them, bring them back, kill them? Are you doing an Ouroboros thing? It's the snakes again. It's not weird. They're everywhere. Religious religious imagery is everywhere when you look for it. I only need to do it once to be satisfied. My chance to kill them was taken from me, and I'm going to get it back. Then I'll be strong. Before you can interrogate this further, uh, can I get perception checks from everyone? Let's see what my minus two has to say. <laughs> I rolled a nine. Nine. I've rolled uh, shockingly low throughout this uh, session. <laughs> Five. <laughs> yeah, uh, so all of you fail very badly. No one botches, but you're having this conversation in which Reaper reveals they've gone to all this trouble to revive their master. Uh, so that they can defeat them and prove they're stronger. I will say, this is the Viperfish Kuatoa I referenced at the beginning of the episode. So that, that's, why, that's why I have a Viperfish coming. They're extremely cool looking. Uh, he, he's just a very badass 
uh, fish person. Uh, but none of you noticed that you've gotten caught in a slipstream underwater and you're gonna have a hard time turning around, which may be a problem because ahead of you, you see a bloom of jellyfish. A bloom is the term for when they are just hella jellyfish. Uh, thousands of them, red, blue, translucent, white, uh, ones with like thin spaghetti uh, stingers, ones with huge thick columns of stingers. There's just a ton and you're kind of getting dragged in that direction. Uh, look, this isn't good, but Barbella can now blame this on why we're off track and not her <laughs> having gone the wrong way. So it seems like a win <laughs> to me. All right. Uh, yeah, you all are kind of getting pulled inexorably towards the jellies. What do you do? Can I use an athletics check to try to, like, swim out of the slipstream? Absolutely. <sighs> Eight. I, I legit am rolling, like, six and below on this dice for skill checks. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, Reaper, you're going to take sick damage as you uh, slam into a uh, pr pretty big jellyfish, and it rakes its uh, stingers across your body, and you, uh, you know, retch in pain. It feels like you've been uh, stabbed all across your arm. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I've, I, I've got a plan. Uh, Barbella's going to try and use Wall of Water to create essentially a different current to push us out of the dangerous one. Oh, all right. I don't think that has any associated roles, right? You want to read that for the audience? Uh, you conjure up a wall of water at a point you can see within range. It can be up to 30 feet long, 10 feet high, 1 foot thick, uh, or could be a ring. It vanishes when the spell ends. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't say there's any, any check to cast it. It's a concentration spell. Yeah, so you're concentrating on that. I think you can block yourself out of the slipstream. Uh, but boys, what about you? You're also being pulled towards the bloom. It's just like a, you know, uh, a wall of jellyfish that kind of came out from behind a undersea cliff while you all were talking. Right, right, right. Um, I think that like the situation here for boys is uh, they don't have a whole lot that they can do to like uh, mitigate or block things off. Um, what type of damage would you say that the jellyfish do? Is it a, a is it is it possibly uh, either acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage? One of those two? One of those few? That's a great question. I believe there are different mechanisms of jellyfish st stings. They have uh, uh, nematocysts, which are like uh, basically kind of a specialized kind of cell that inject venom. So mm. I think poison is probably the closest, but I understand acid could also be a reasonable I interpretation. I was just, I think the idea of like burning a spell slot to cast absorb element, just kind of tank it, but take like have resistance to the damage as boys kind of braces themselves for the impact of them. Yeah, I, I am definitely open to that. So I think while this doesn't technically uh, count as acid, like you, you mm -hmm. can do something like that with the uh, the contents of their stinging cells. So like mm -hmm. you're coming, you're going right towards a box jellyfish and you're like, oh, oh, balls <laughs> like that's not good. Yeah. It's almost like like boys just sort of like uh, tries to almost like go borderline fetal position to kind of make themselves a bit smaller and use like their coat to protect themselves while Gotti's just like swimming along and not caring. <laughs> and then boys just like slams through the uh, the box jellyfish uh, fishes, uh, tendrils, stingers, what have you. Uh, yeah. So instead of taking seven damage, you take three. <clears throat> but uh, so uh, Barbella with the wall of water, you can keep yourself out of the bloom. You see Reaper and Bo Boyce uh, kind of plunge in like Mufasa in front of the wildebeests is kind of the vibe we're having here. Oof. So, yeah, it was keep trying things and I'm just going to keep rolling damage as uh, those okay. two just get stung repeatedly. So uh, as Reaper is being stung, uh, I imagine she is like yelling out uh, like in pain and uh, shadows are going to start uh, building off of her, and I'm going to spend two key points to cast the spell Darkness around me, uh, which will basically create a big cube of magical darkness. Uh, and then I want to try to use that to help me do my shadow step into Barbella's shadow. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, if you were gonna say I'm just gonna shadow teleport it again, I'm gonna be like, You're out in the open, there are no shadows. So you you were yeah. you're thinking five D chess ahead of me. That's sick. 
Yeah, I had to use some key points to actually cast darkness, and that darkness is going to stay behind. So I don't know if that makes things harder, but like I, I like the idea that like Reaper is is being stung. It feels like channeling this darkness to escape uh, and and get to like relative safety, uh, particularly in the shadow of someone who managed to get out on their own uh, power. Oh, I was going to say I've got a I've got a suggestion to maybe help if if boys would like. Uh I want to cast Find Steed. Oh, is that a concentration spell? Uh, yeah, but I, I made the water wall and got myself out of the, the current, didn't I? So, uh, oh, no, it's not a concentration. Nope. It's not a concentration. Um, I summon a spirit that assumes the form of an unusually intelligent, strong, and loyal steed, creating a lasting bond with it. Uh, it can take on a form I choose. I think it's got to be, like, seahorse meat snake. Oh my gosh. Rideable, rideable snake. What the fuck? Snake horse. Snake horse. This is a great Google. Oh no. What have you done? Scalies, please. <laughs> oh sea no. Horse, um, snake. Oh, look, this pipe fish. Pipe fish. Pipe fish. Oh, okay. Look at this. Look at this guy. Oh, look at him. Oh! Oh, that's that's pretty good. It's I, okay. It might be a pipe fish. It's so cute. Mm. It's basically it's got a seahorse head, but it's a snake. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. god. This is okay. so good. Yes. Okay. Specifically, dragon fa face pipe fish. This is incredible. Yes. Now this is another thing I'm adding to the list of things that the the great riddle serpent might actually be. It's p pipe fish. Yeah. No. I <laughs> now that I've seen specifically the dragon face pipe fish, I, like I, I'm kind of sold on this. Mm. Yeah. So basically, uh, Boyce and and Gaudi are just like going through these uh going through these jellyfish, and then the dragon face pipe fish just sort of like comes across, uh, like just in a perpendicular trajectory Boyce is able to sort of grab on and like there's like a, a almost like a gentle grasp against Boyce's angle by Gaudi as just sort of they get dragged out as like a long sort of like wiggling tail of things uh, connected to the pipe fish before it is able to circle up and around the 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 current and drag Boyce over to Barbella and uh, Reaper. Um, I'm glad you got out safe. Um, I I apologize. Uh, the 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 uh, pipe fish is a little unruly to ride. Uh, not there's not like really a middle section that naturally like your 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 body sort of stays in. It's just a big tube. You kind of got to hold on a bit. But I'm glad it worked. Okay. Uh -huh. Good thinking. On, good thinking on your uh, bar uh, barbell. Thank you kindly. Look at me doing good thinking, not screwing up this mission at all. Are we sure we're headed the right way? Well, I mean, we got caught in that current, so if we're not heading the right way, you know, that would be out of my control at this point. <laughs> uh, can I get a religion check from Barbella again to see if she is in fact going the right way? Uh, yeah... <laughs> Uh, that's 18. Oh, great, yeah. So I think uh, yeah. somewhat sheepishly you, uh, you focus, maybe do a quick prayer, and you realize you're going the wrong direction, and I don't know if you want to admit to that, but you know the right direction now. It was not through those jellyfish. Uh, Barbella will sort of uh, uh, pull the, the, the Book of Riddles up and will sort of go... Uh, okay, okay. Uh, a, a little, a little turned around by the jellyfish, but uh, this, this is, this is the way, this is the way we're going. We're, we're heading over here. Uh, you know, the rid the riddle snake Trixie moves around. Uh, we gotta, we gotta, uh, we gotta, gotta keep retriangulating this way. Uh, as you all go to turn to go the correct way, you hear a voice coming from the direction of the jelly uh, bloom. Uh, you hear a voice say, "Help! Help!" Help! Uh, Reaper's gonna be like, all right, so which way do we, like, very clearly heard it, and it's like, so which way do we go now, according to your book? <laughs> uh, I'm having, I'm having a look. All, I'm looking through the, the book for riddles, but all of the riddles about directions, like, the answer is a map. Like, there's not very many that, like, you know, did, like, really actually guide us, other than being, like, 
fucking look at a map. Um, d- should we? Should we? Should we help? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's incredible. Look, I'm look. I, I look. I'm trying to find. Gu- I'm trying to find guidance in the text as to whether we should stop and help or if we should just like keep going where we're going. But like, look, listen to this. I've got nothing to work with. I have cities but no houses. I have mountains but no trees. I have water but no fish. What am I? A map. Again, I look on the next page. I have seas without water. I have forests without wood. I have deserts without sand. I have houses without brick. What am I? A map. Where can you find rivers with no water? Cities with no buildings. It's, it's always a it's always a map. This this is not helpful. I do I am lost. I don't know what to do. I, I just want to make it very clear that we can help this person. I Reaper is not going to be the one to be like yes, let's help this individual. Okay. Uh, I th- I think it's time for the spell I do where Austin has to do some work. I think it's time for augury. Oh lord! All right, augury. Yeah, this is this is this is the one where a deity sort of you're gonna tell. Hey, would helping this person out who called for help would it go well? Would it go badly? Would would there be positive or negative results to that? Uh, it can be done as a can it can it be done as a. Uh, yeah, it can be done as a ritual, but also there's a person calling for help, so like maybe I have to actually just cast it, probably. The DM chooses from the following possible omens. Wheel for good results, woe for bad results, wheel and woe for both good and bad, or nothing. This is interesting. So you uh, cast the spell and you get an augury from your book. Um, you can add some flavor if you would like, Barbella, to this, but someone's calling for help in the jelly bloom, and the augury you get is... Whoa, bad result for going to help them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, I, th- I think the flavor for this um, is an unusual one. I think Barbella um, opens the book on a random page to, to get a, a sense of, like, what should I do? And it's a page that's, like, kind of ripped halfway down and, like, part of the riddle's missing. It's like, mm, that's a bad sign. You don't want a riddle that's incomplete. You don't want, like, half the setup missing. Mm. I totally understand Reaper is a loner and you have your religious uh, omens. Boyce, uh, what, what do you think about this? Because I assume you're not going to split the party, but, like, what is your character uh, thought as far as abandoning the person asking for help? I mean, it's just not in Boyce's nature to do that. You know, Boyce is just a, a goody two-shoes kind of fella for the most part. I, I mean, before like you go over if you're planning to, I think Barbella will make the argument of, uh, I mean, I mean, we saw we saw Grandpa before, who warned us there were suspicious suspicious fellas this direction, and we've not bumped into any suspicious fellas yet, and mm, the book's giving me bad vibes. Could be not not a person actually in need of help. They might not even like riddles. They might be that bad of a person. Gosh, just the idea of like, how, how, how can you tell someone's good or bad? Do they like riddles? Yeah. No. Uh. Can I... <laughs> Austin, can I do an intimidation check on the voice and ask him what they'll give us in return for helping them? Sure. <laughs> uh, five. <laughs> Yeah, you just hear a blood curdling scream. Well, they have nothing left to offer us. Let's go. I I think I I think I can make out what the riddle was that's missing part of it. I think I think I I think I can get the missing words. I think it was uh the bad news is I dropped my cactus. The worst news is that I caught it. That's a very bad omen. That's a real bad omen. All right, well let's go drop off this little uh, plate thing and, and... Go about cool. Day. G- goodbye. Um, I actually have one thing that boys can do um, to investigate this as they're passing by. Yeah. Uh, so with the uh, so with the like little schematics that float around Boyce's head, the uh, the manifested mind. I'm going to read a little bit of detail here. Where is it? The Mind actually can see and hear and can telepathically share what it sees and hears with me without any action required. So I could send the spectral mind, the spectral like diagram into the 
into the bloom and see if I can spy who is in there, if there's someone in particular. Yeah, I mean, this is a feature you get at level six, so I want to give you something for this. Um, you can cause the mind to manifest, hovering in an unoccupied space uh, with a range of 60 feet. So if you send this uh, mind into the jelly bloom, it can look around and you see uh, there is definitely someone in there. Uh, I will say that. It appears to be uh, a, a merfolk of some description, but there's just uh, so many jellies, it's hard to get more than that. Um, I get... I guess I, th uh, I think I'll tell you is that uh, you know that the, the, they appear to be like deep in the in the bloom, so it would be mm -hmm. it would be difficult to get them out. But sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Boyce will relay that information to the others, just saying, well, if it's someone who's suspicious, at least they're not, uh, at the very least they're not someone from above the shore uh, down here. They seem to be a, a a fellow swimmer, as it were, but. Can't make out much more other than that. Before they they call the the mind back towards themselves. Um, actually, you know what? I'm proud of you, boys. Why is that? You agree that it's good to sometimes just cut off the chaff. If they were so weak they can't escape the bloom, then perhaps they deserve whatever they get. There are times that when. The the problem is that if you try to help everyone, sometimes you get pulled underneath. And it's not so much about cutting off the weak and more about if I try to go in there by myself to help them, I probably would be just as liable to get to to perish as I would be to possibly help them. All right, so you all are talking about this uh, as you go in the correct direction as Barbella is leading you. Uh, can I actually get intelligent saving throws of all things? Uh, oh, no. Um, <laughs> That's never a great one to hear. Uh, 25 for Bowie. Holy shit. Uh, zero. I oh botched. My God. <laughs> one, one uh, I can. Oh, it, it's a bot, so I can't help. I can add a thing. Uh, one sec. What's my current? I. I. It's. It's irrelevant, but I. I do like the idea of just a straight yeah. zero. I, like I've got a thing that can add a plus two to someone's uh, saving throw result, but I. I'm gonna guess Austin that that couldn't un unbotch that. No, it's a. Bo it's botched. Can you? <laughs> okay. It, can you imagine how wild it would be if you were like, I take that zero to a two, and Austin's like, actually, Reaper, you do save it <laughs> Uh Cool. I'm doing aura of protection to add a plus two because I have a negative modifier in intelligence. Uh, eight. Oh, wow. Okay. So both Barbella and Reaper are hit by this uh, yeah, but, wave. But not quite as bad as I was. Not quite yeah, as eight's bad. Eight's better than a six. Uh, Reaper, you take eight damage. And Barbella, you take seven damage. Interesting rolls there, uh, because the the botch uh, doubled <laughs> one of the rolls, but still pretty close. Yeah. But there's just this overwhelming uh, sense in your head of uh, information. It's like directly uh, jacking into the matrix into your spine. Uh, it's there's some kind of powerful presence on the on the horizon underwater. It's hard to see, but there's like a huge shape. Uh, some kind of great serpent uh, in the distance. Oh, hey! Oh, hey, buddy! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with thalassophobia. Uh-huh. It's the uh, fear of deep water and the kind of, like, if you've ever seen any uh, images of, like, shapes down there, uh, I feel like this is a pretty common thing we're all very afraid of, but it could be a uh, snake, it could be a large eel, it could be a pipe fish, a, yeah. a great worm. Uh, yeah, Barbella is going to assume that this is the riddle fish, snake, serpent, and is going to try offering a snake-themed riddle to sort of show that she means no harm. Uh, so she sort of very confidently bellows out, What do you call a snake that's 3.14 meters long? <laughs> <laughs> it's the, a python holy shit i knew it was pie and i was like pie snake <laughs> that's great um in in return you all three hear a riddle in your mind where does seaweed look for a job 
Ooh. I, I was like, okay, it's like, is it I'm like, like, boys will whisper over to Barbella. Is it like the, the kelp wanted papers or something like that? Is that Holy something? shit. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's fucking genius. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, ba- Barbella, Barbella turns and looks and goes, I've never been more proud to be your friend. <laughs> uh, the, gr- the great shape in the distance seems to glow a silvery light. Uh, just briefly, like, uh, as if, you know, turning up the, uh, the luminosity of the, the reflections from its scales. Uh, it's still very far away, but you're getting closer. And because you answered that riddle correctly, uh, you are, your minds are not fucking pureed in your skulls. <laughs> Don't just a shot in the dark of my part. I'm like, wait a minute, is that is that is that just this simple? Okay, it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You uh, and Barbella turns and goes. You you see the power of this thing, right? Uh, I mean, I, I, I got another one I could share later on, but uh, I, I think the, I mean, we got to focus uh, on this for now. I mean, so so simple, so obvious, so missable. Could have turned our brains to mush. This thing is. Mm. All right. Oh, oh, the rush. I will say, you note that although you see it's a body. It's like this huge uh, scaled uh, body that is like giving off this light. You don't see the ends of it. You remember the conversation you had with Hialeah where she uh, <laughs> questioned, is like, is it come out of the vent? Is part of its bodies down in the, the hydrothermal vents? Or is it coming down? Is it like a root of the Great Banyan tree? Like... I don't, I don't, Austin Yorsky does not know the answers to these questions, but there's, it's just so massive. Uh, it's like a, a mountain range in size and you have to keep getting closer. Uh, on, on the approach, Barbella is just going to be like, uh, excitedly babbling, being like, Hey, hey, Snake, thank you. Thank you for the, for the laminated riddle book. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot better than the unlaminated ones down here. I did, I did think about whether I could laminate the big, the big roll that I'm bringing to the potluck soon, uh, from, you know, having learned that from the, the, the laminated riddle book. But then I realized that, you know, it's a lot harder to eat the roll if I laminate it. But in, in your wisdom, you laminated the thing that, that I needed laminated. So I appreciate that very much. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you do not get a direct response, but you can feel its oh. intellectual presence around you as if when you get closer, you will be asked another of the Riddles three. Oh, yeah. Uh, Barbella is like, has noticeably like picked up the pace. It's like, right, more Riddles, let's fucking go. No, no dawdling. You all start uh, swimming in that direction. You see ahead of you, you're going to have to pass over a beautiful, colorful coral reef. Uh, Quite large, this is kind of the ideal place to build a community. Uh, You're far away from Zolfo now, which has the very valuable, uh, you know, uh, a lot of hydrothermal vents in close proximity. Uh, This is like more the place you would want to live, but the vents are much further and farther between, uh, I will say. It's like having arid soil uh, near the gold mine and then like better soil away from the gold mine, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But you're, you're kind of getting near this coral reef. Is there anything you want to say or do before I ask for another roll? Uh, can I do a nature check? Does anything like live in this uh, sort of area? Uh, like this, um, I don't know why I blanked on the word coral reef. <laughs> it's just going to be like <laughs> rock thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, double check. Pretty sure. Yeah, it's a negative. Just wanted to check. <laughs> uh, got a two. How's that, how's that uh, tickle your fancy, your risky? <laughs> Yeah, you're like, coral, uh, I'm pretty sure that's food. And then you uh, eat uh, a, a rock. <laughs> <laughs> it makes my teeth stronger. Yeah. Sucks <laughs> to be you losers with your weak teeth. As I have, like, shards of coral sticking out of my mouth. As they uh, are floating over, Boyce will be just sketching out some d- basic diagrams of the coral reef. As they go by and, and kind of relaying a little bit of some of the observations you made to the others, uh, Austin, about like, you're like, well, yeah, you could probably make something out of here. But uh, what a lot of people come here for are the vents and there's not too many around here. So be a hard draw for a lot of folks, I guess. Oh, yeah. Let's do another investigation role for your personal quest. Earlier, we talked about using roots from the island. Let's talk about coral. 
That's a 17 for the investigation. Yeah, coral reefs are an incredible uh, element of ecosystem. They uh, allow just uh, a bazillion species of plants and animals and uh, algae and all everything to thrive. In some ways, they are ideal, uh, one of the best. The only problem is they are a little sensitive to pollution and heat change, like uh, temperature change, and they can die. For example, if, for example, humans were really irresponsible, we could kill off like a huge percentage of all life if we mistreated coral reefs, for example, just out the top of the hat. Hypothetically, yeah, hypothetically, right, right, right. Yeah. Um. Thankfully, Cor has never gotten a ghost typing before. <laughs> It has Cursula! <laughs> Fucking Cursula! Yeah. Uh, so what I'll say for you oh. is if you're trying to bring the town of Zolfo to life, uh, transplanting coral there would be like one of the top tier things. It would just be difficult to do it uh, in a large number and without killing the coral. So mm -hmm. I, like, this is just something that you and I are kind of spitballing together. I'm not looking for a right or wrong answer, but if you're an architect who wants to build up this town... Uh, you know, that, that's definitely on the map, so something to think about. Barbella, I, I I think, is just in the background of this. Like, uh, you know, very, very, very proud of boys having gotten the first riddle, snake riddle, but is also mildly embarrassed that she was not the first one to answer it, and therefore is, like, really just, like, scrubbing through the book, being like, okay, ocean, wave, beach, sea... Uh, seaweed. Okay, 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 okay. We gotta. I gotta. I gotta get. I gotta get my 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 my. my I gotta get my research done. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. All right, everyone, ready? Uh mm huh. -hmm. All right. So you are all over the coral reef. When you feel uh, uh, something wash over you, you're expecting a second riddle, but instead your body feels weird. Everyone, wisdom saving throws. <laughs> Wisdom, huh? Wisdom. Uh, Fifteen. Four. Five. Oops. All three of you fail as you are hit by the spell. Oh. Oopsie. Just a sec. If that's, uh, I add a plus two to mine. Seventeen. Oh. The seventeen pass. It does. Hooray! All right. So, uh, Reaper and Boyce, you are hit with the spell Hold Person. Uh, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be paralyzed for the duration. Uh, the duration is one minute. So your arms kind of go limp at your sides, your legs stop kicking, and you can't move. Barbella, for a moment, this starts happening to you. I don't know if you just have the willpower or some kind of paladin magic to kick out of it, uh, but you are able to move your body as the people who cast these spells uh, float up to you, and you see about a dozen ne'er-do-wells. Uh, so let's say uh, 12 bandits, as warned out to you by Grandpa Capehart. 12 bandits, did you say? Yes, these are merfolk. That's quite, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yep, these are merfolk, and specifically Medusa, which Medusa in D&D has a specific term. Obviously in Greek mythology, they're called Gorgons, and Medusa is the name of a specific lady. Not the point. The point is that the, these are merfolk, who have things coming out of the top of their heads. So most of them have jellyfish tentacles coming out instead of snakes. Uh, some have eels instead of snakes. Uh, and one has, I'm gonna put an image here of a brittle star. Do you know what a brittle star is? Mm. No. It is uh, similar to uh, your traditional uh, sea star, like a Patrick from SpongeBob, but the legs are much thinner. Um, and they are like whip-like and covered usually in like little spines and projections. The brittle stars are not actually dangerous, but they look dangerous. Yeah. Um, I think Barbella has the sense of mind to be momentarily paralyzed and sort of breaks through it a little bit and then will deliberately stop moving herself and act as if she is paralyzed still as well. Ooh just to try and get the jump on this situation should a good moment arise. That's great. Can I get a deception? Yeah, how am I at deception? Ah, uh, not terrible. Uh, Sixteen? Ooh, perfect. Yes, they buy this instantly. 
So uh, the, cool. these merfolk swim up to you. Uh, they all have different weapons, uh, mostly like spears, piercing weapons. Some of them have staves, you know, like for spell casting. So uh, you're pretending to be uh, paralyzed. That's really good. Uh, can I uh, attempt to intimidate them? Uh, I want to make it clear that they do not know who they're messing with. Uh, all right. Yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty high DC, but f- feel free. I roll. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a five. <laughs> I truly just cannot get above a five today. That's hilarious. Uh, so the merfolk. You uh, you f- poor fools have no idea who you're messing with. I am the ultimate fighter. Yeah, uh, the merfolk with the brittle star uh, whip-like projections coming out of her head looks at you as you say that, and she just lashes you across the face with her oh, uh, spiny uh, uh, legs, okay. tails. This is exactly the moment I want to try and catch them off guard while they're like, you know, completely underestimating all this. Oh no! Um, Barbella is going to cast Gust of Wind. Oh, okay. Uh, I know what that does theoretically. Are you going to try to do that before uh, Reaper takes damage? I that is that is the intention. Okay. To try and sort of uh, reactively uh, gust of wind. Uh, so a strong a strong wind, sixty feet long, ten feet wide, blast from your uh, from a direction you choose. Uh, each creature that uh, uh, starts its turn in the line or is in the line must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed fifteen feet away from me. All right. Um, I'm gonna make this as a group check. This is the group is just called the Medusa. Uh, is the plural there? Yeah. Thirteen. I don't think that's gonna do it. Uh, that's not gonna do it. All right. So you blast them away, Barbella, before they can even say anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that 15 feet and a strong wind that's going to make it harder for them to get back towards us because there's, you know, strong wind is going to buy me enough time that Barbella can start, like, shaking the others going, you're good, you're good, can I can I get you out of this, uh, stuckness? Oh, okay. Uh, she tries, she tries, she tries, like, slapping them to see if that helps. Okay, two things. One, I'm going to roll to see if I rem- to retain concentration. Uh, 11. Uh, so I didn't take damage. I'll say that that uh, against your uh, your roll uh, was... Wow, let me see. It's, t- it's 10, right? As a default yes, with no damage? It's, it's 10 or half damage, whichever yes. is higher. Okay, so they pass on 11 versus 10. So I need you to get a medicine check to try to get... First of all, pick Reaper or Boyce. Who do you try to snap out of it? Ooh, ooh. Reaper, I think, as 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 a fighter, I think will will hit the ground running. Uh, so I'm gonna try there. Uh, so I need to do a medicine check and what? Beat an eleven? Uh, just no, a ten. Oh, a ten. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a straight d twenty. Three. Mm. Okay, this was a great attempt. I really like this. But you blast them all away with a gust. They go spinning off. Uh, they manage to retain their concentration, though, and they swim back and yeah. surround you before you can snap them okay. out of it. Okay, in that case, channel divinity use, marine layer. There is now a thick cloud of fog 20 feet centered around myself. Whoa, okay, yeah, you create this uh, layer of fog between you and the Medusa, and now there's this kind of standoff. You hear outside of the fog because you can't see each other. Uh, one of them says... Uh, real recognize real lady that was real that that was real congratulations cool yeah give me like eight or nine more seconds and my friends are gonna kick your ass well that might have been on the table but of course my friends have a lot of magic to go around they'll cast hold person again so maybe you and i just talk this one out muscles okay why are you attacking us what what's your deal well, we weren't going to attack you. I was going to try to uh, play the wounded uh, deer and uh, get myself into your group, but you didn't take the bait. That would have been a lot easier. So so what you're saying is you wanted to deceive us, and we weren't deceived, and therefore we deserve to be attacked. Is that what we're going for? Really makes me think that like we, we, we lost out on something by not letting you into the group. Do you even like riddles? Listen, it's not about deserve, Lady Bicep, all right? We just, we're on a mission. We're trying to get something done. It's for a good cause. Don't get your, your fucking quads in a twist. I need to, I, look, I need to get a vibe check on you. What did the ocean say to the seaweed? 
<laughs> what did the ocean say to the seaweed? Um, yeah. Uh, please give Allison the thing you're carrying. No, it said nothing. It just waved. You you cannot be trusted. You're right. We can't. Uh, we're really... We're, we have a high priority mission and you're not going to stop us. So the, I guess your Bar- your religion Barbella seems is, real. I'll tell you that. Barbella, Barbella is watching the clock going, uh, you, you two okay? You good? You good? Yeah, I was curious. Can we make any uh, checks to try to get out of this? Um, I think we're going to, yeah, we're going to do wisdom ch- saves in a moment again. I just want to give uh, Barbella a little chance to, to banter with the villain. Uh, Allison, the Medusa, she is the one with the brittle star whips. She says, uh, so our queen kind of uh, bit the big one, died real hard, and our, our kingdom's going to fall unless we bring her back. Uh, and it's going to take years to wait in line. So it makes a lot more sense to just follow one of you priesty people out here and throw our stuff in the hole first. I know you're going to get in trouble, and I'm really sorry, but... Like, the fate of the whole kingdom, it rests on this. You have to understand. I, 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 look, that is above my pay grade. There are people up on the surface whose job is to, like, deal with that. And, like, as as I understand it, like, at their discretion, they could decide to just go, cool, yeah, your stuff can go in the hole. We are not team what, who, who, who goes in what hole. That's not (laughs) us. You're not the hole police? I, I mean... (laughs) With the whole, we're not we're, we're not the whole scholars. We're not the whole. Uh, we're, we're not the whole patrol here. Okay. We're, we're not Fuck. the ones who do the paperwork for the whole. No, please be the whole patrol. Are you kidding me? Okay. Look, we're the, we're the whole patrol, but we're not the whole. Like, oh, what, what am I looking for? Uh, the, the, the ones doing all the paperwork. I don't know what the word for that is anymore. Qu- Quinn. Fine, we're the whole patrol. Quinn, I'm sorry, but uh, the whole patrol is a much better name than the vibe checkers. I win this season. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you guys the opportunity to name yourselves, all right? So that's, that's on you. You should only feel shame for yourself. Also, the whole patrol was your nickname in high school, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yep all right uh allison says listen i we can see the serpent in the distance uh, i if we just let us swim over the, there and it'll all work out you can go home we don't need to hey, uh, do anything hey, i gave i gave you a literal beginner level riddle and you 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 did not like even attempt it how are you gonna handle when you walk closer to that thing and it asks you like an actual decent riddle and your brain just melts because you go uh the answer's i don't know Oh, gosh, you're right. I guess we do have to take you hostage. Okay, you twisted my arm. Hey, hey, I will never answer a riddle on behalf of riddleless swine like you. <laughs> riddleless swine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I get free at this point? Like, I assume eventually I will just be able to get out of the whole person. Yeah, you're good. Okay, uh, I want to... Uh, use uh some key points and cast pass without trace <gasps> and create like a, a field of shadows around us that we can like use to escape through all right read pass without trace to the audience so a field of shadow shadows and silence radiate from you masking you and your companions from detection for the duration each creature you choose within 30 feet of you including you has plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means a creature that receives this bonus leaves no trace no tracks or other traces of passage all right so uh plus 10 to stealth checks everyone roll to try to escape uh the big fog bank you are surrounded by 12 people, so it's going to be a high DC, so. Okay. All right. Uh, that is a 15 for Boyce. 15 for Barbella. Uh, 29 for Reaper. Oh, man. I told you it was going to be a high DC. I wanted 20 because uh, escaping <laughs> while surrounded is very hard. So I'll say, Reaper, you can get away if you want to get away. The others are going to be spotted. What do you do? You want to get away, or do you want to turn, get, be part of the chase scene? Hmm. What would Reaper do? I think Reaper has an instinctive nature to be a lone wolf, but she also knows she can't complete this mission without Barbella 
and boys who know riddles more than she does. So I think there is a brief moment where she sees that she still hasn't been seen and she looks like she's about to just go like fucking supersonic dash out of there. And then she realizes like, shit, I don't know how to do this alone. Could she use the stealth to get an ambush? Like, not because you you could get out of the fog and like have a second not being caught to, I don't know, do something to the person who keeps casting hold person which would make the rest of us fleeing a lot easier. Yeah, my vision of this is like, Reaper, you can creep out of the fog bank, maybe like hide in some silt on the sea floor and like crawl pretty far away while the others try to break out and then they're spotted and then a chase ensues. Uh, you do still have the dragon face pipe fish, right? That doesn't run out. No, no. So like, yeah, Barbella could make a speedy departure. It wouldn't be a stealthy one, but it would be fast. Yeah, I, th I think we might be in a chase scene here. Yeah, like boys can, th like boys can technically ride on their familiar just because Gotti can become a large size, but Gotti's speed is thirty, not nearly as fast as the others. So, like, uh, boys will definitely be taking up the rear yeah. if trying to give chase. I'm, uh, trying okay, to run. Uh, I'm trying to see if I've got anything else I can do to uh, speed myself up. I have something I, I can do to help me in this case here, because okay, if you've got a way to speed yourself up, I'll yes. take the steed then. Yeah, because uh, boys can burn a third level spell slot to cast haste on uh basically either themselves or on gaudi to just get like a speed of 60 for the next minute yeah oh okay i've got one other thought to like really help us out for a second to get that good start austin how good is the species uh that we're facing at suddenly not being in water <laughs> oh no uh, I mean, merfolk, I think we we talked about them being, uh, you know, uh, being able to breathe and everything on land. In fact, during the downtime, you did walk around. Yeah. But, I mean, it might be disorienting. Um, I'm looking at the fine steed here. I think that the uh, war horse has a speed of 60. So if you're a hasting gaudy, yeah. the pipefish is 60, and uh, reaper with a head start, and monks are the fastest class. I was going to say, I, I have a lot of the abilities to go fast and dash. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's what I'm gonna do to create to create our opening to like really get us off on a good start. So Reaper's Reaper is stealthing to like get a head start. Um. Uh. Boyce is is sort of getting all speedy. Uh. Barbella's plan is to cast create or destroy water. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. To basically make a ten foot cube of not water to disorient our foes so that we can from from the fog cloud just get running all right so this is an interesting chase scene uh first of all uh can i get animal handling for the people who are on mounts and athletics for the person who is swimming which is reaper and let's all get flavor i want to know like what does gaudy transform into like what do you is it like an underwater motorcycle or what, what's going on there i i, I would i would say I would say that it's almost like Gaudi shifts into again more of a shape similar to the uh, the 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 pipefish, almost like you know. Uh, and boys holds on as well as they can with a four. <laughs> uh, very quickly, and I feel like this is helpful considering how bad boys' roll went there. Uh, it's a thirty foot no water, not ten. 30, 30 foot cube of no water. So uh, factor that into how you interpret Boyce's bad roll. Yeah, I rolled a 10. And uh, the way I imagine this is Reaper is just uh, hoofing it uh, on her legs until she like gains up enough speed that she just shoots into like kind of like, uh, you know, how, like Echo the Dolphin had like that speed boost kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. Like, I just go into that and I'm I'm just swimming very fast for a while. Yeah, just blurring because you're going so fast. <laughs> With a 17, uh, Barbella, you shoot ahead on the dragon-faced pipefish out of the range of the Medusa. With a 10 and a 4, uh, Reaper and Boyce, uh, they start throwing uh, javelins at you. They're actually uh, giant urchin uh, spines. So uh, against Reaper, that is a crit. And against oh Boyce, that is an 18. <sighs> yeah, the hits. I yeah. feel so bad about how often I am uh, clobbering Reaper. 
Uh, it's not intentional, but these but arcs... Surely, surely that should be with disadvantage against, Re against Reaper because of the great stealth or something. Uh, let's see here. That's 12 damage against Reaper, and that is 8 damage against boys. So you are, like, getting hit by people who are javelining the spines at you. There's 12 of them, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are... You're, you're actually pretty lucky as far as being attacked goes. And now the chase is on. Barbella, right. so with their 17, you're racing ahead. They can't hit you yet. Uh, in the distance... Uh, there is the shadow of the great riddle fish, uh, the great serpent itself, uh, and you feel a wave wash over you, intelligent saving throw as your mind is God. buffeted. Uh, another natural 20? I think Hell this is yeah. <laughs> Seven. Oh my God. Reaper, please. Reaper, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to do this. I can't. I just can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man. Barbella? I'm so glad I took that feat to give me more health, because I think I'd be dead already yeah. otherwise. <laughs> uh, what's what's the roll, sorry? Intelligence saving throw. Uh, intelligence, uh... Uh, crit, 21. I'm, I'm surrounded by two people who crit. <laughs> <laughs> Barbella's in her element. This is time for riddles. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, I max damage there. That's eight to Reaper as the... Uh, the uh, I'm still up. The Riddlefish hits you with the second of his powerful riddles. Are you ready for this? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you get if you cross a fish and an elephant? Oh, Barbella jumps right in on this one uh, and shouts, Swimming trunks! Holy, that was real time. I did not edit that. She had my <laughs> ass immediately. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, Austin, I've read a lot of fucking ocean riddles <laughs> for this season. That's so funny. Um, so you yell that. Uh, some people hear you and they're able to internalize it in time, but you notice uh, uh, one Medusa at the back of the pe pack, her head pops like a fucking I balloon. was going to say, her head's going to fuck it explode i know your ski <laughs> it's like, just like scanners <laughs> yeah just like <laughs> this is some fucking mortal combat fatality shit <laughs> absolutely yes. fear the riddles all right yeah you all are getting uh, closer to the riddle snake it's it's size and it's uh majesty are overwhelming and you're racing towards it um the, these uh medusa are trying to catch up what do you do so i, I have an i have a weird thought um, I, the idea of like almost like making a barrier via ice knife, like throwing an ice knife, not really at anyone in particular, but throwing it and making it blow up to create like tendrils and shards of ice as a lattice to sort of like, uh, make it difficult to kind of keep up pace against, uh, the others. Um, while you're doing that, Barbella is going to try and, uh, um, sort of, while still running away, uh, get in physical contact with Reaper to do lay on hands. Oh, hot uh, dog. <laughs> so, uh, do, do, do. uh, how, how much health ideally in a perfect world would you like? Uh, okay, so... How I, far off max <laughs> are you? Uh, 34. Uh, I can give you 30. Okay, I'll take that. I'll happily take that. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. 34. <laughs> um, yeah, that is that is my entire lay on hands pool is just like slapped oh, I'm into so you. Sorry. I just slap you on the back and suddenly you're like, okay, here we go. Uh yeah, I can attempt to throw some shurikens back there and see if I can't uh nail anybody in the eye uh, <laughs> uh South Park. Uh, <laughs> now, now I botched. Never mind. I'm oh done. My. No, <laughs> I know what the botch is too. I'm so fucking evil. Uh, you reach into your bag, pull out a shuriken, and throw it. And you grab. And I, I, I throw the fucking ch chest piece, don't I? You absolutely throw yeah. the isopod scale that was entrusted to you earlier in this episode specifically. Oh fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, um, <laughs> Austin, can I cast Expeditious Retreat while on my my sea snake to fucking book it back for the scale? Yeah, it's like floating in the water because uh, it was, you know, thrown like a shuriken. I want 
a acrobatics if you want to dive off the pipe fish and grab it before Allison does. Allison the Medusa. Uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna acrobatics contest right now, midair. Uh, eight. Ten. Oh fuck. She grabs it. Oh my god. And you see uh in uh her other hand she has a uh, uh an urchin spine. You know, she's been throwing these as a weapon, but these are the body of her fallen queen, the urchin Medusa, who instead of snakes has urchin spines. And she is going to run for the well. Uh, now she has both. Uh, yeah. Um, wait, sorry. One second. Uh-huh. I'm, pa- I'm pausing because I've suddenly realized that she's got both. Would she throw both in? Our job would still get done. You have no fucking idea. This is a great question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no. Uh, okay, fuck it. I have basically no spells left, but I'm going to use, like, I'm going to use one of the fucking few I have. Barbella casts Compel Jewel. Oh, my lord. All right, read that to the Wisdom audience. Wisdom saving. Th- you attempt to compel a creature into a duel. A creature you can see within range must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is drawn to you, compelled by your divine demand. Uh, it will, for the duration, have disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures other than me. Uh, would have to make wisdom saves to move to somewhere that is further than 30 feet from me. Basically, stuck fighting me for a bit. All right, wisdom save. Here we go. Seven, that's a fail. That's fail. Come, come here, come here, you <laughs> riddleless coward! <laughs> all right, so you two are going to duel in front of the riddle snake uh, as uh, the, this chase. All the other Medusa are catching up too. Uh, intelligent saving throw is the last of the riddles. Three washes over the group. Nineteen. Uh, Eleven. Ten. Only boy saves. Everyone else takes only four damage, as you okay. get you get hit by the wave of a uh, just pure power and intelligence uh, from the riddle snake. As you hear the final riddle. Why did the cantaloupe jump in the ocean? I think I know this one too, Austin. <laughs> Is it because it wanted to be a watermelon? <laughs> uh, you and Allison both at the same time say watermelon uh, as the b- blast oh. of intelligence knocks the others back and you are dueling in front of the hydrothermal vent which erupts in golden light uh, like a fucking uh, volcano just explodes uh, this golden particulate as the well of resurrection opens next to you. Mm-hmm.